In terms of rod selection, fresh or salt, there are a lot of different variables that go into your thought process. For some people, it's just a matter of price point. You've got the power of the rod, the action of the rod, and some folks really care all about the intricacies of the rod tip, the rod guides, and the reel seats. I'm Jim Hutchinson with The Fisherman Magazine, and I happen to be someplace in the middle of all that. Not too technical, but when it comes to selecting a rod, it's kind of nice to be able to talk to a bunch of different people who use rods for a bunch of different applications. I have the opportunity to sit back with the folks from Century, not just some of the pro staffers, but also with the folks who design these rods. And that's why, Ryan, this is a great opportunity to kind of talk about Century as a unique product. What makes Century rods different from anything else a person might find in the market? Well, that's a great question, Jim. Uh, uh, the, the big thing is it's, it's all based on performance. You know, we look for the best performing guides, the best to go on the rods. We use the best performing composites. We go to the umpteenth degree to process the composites to make them perform the exact way they should. Um, a lot of our builds that you see on the rods, they are, they are designed to showcase the blank, which is the heart of the rod, which makes it special. This is what's special about Century, is the blank. Uh, it's not something that's coming from, you know, a sweatshop out and wherever. These are truly high performance, uh, small batch handcrafted uh, pieces of art. You know, they're not real fancy. It's like, you know, uh, somebody going to Juilliard for music and then playing at a <laughs> punk rock band. You know, it's, it's all, it's, it, they're light, they're, they're, they're no nonsense, uh, but they're also very clean. You mentioned a blank, though. A couple of folks have referred to as mad scientist when it comes to designing rods. What goes, what's different about the blank that Century uses as opposed to what you said is a standard blank somebody would find? All right, so um, everything that we do is small batch manufactured. Uh, everything is CNC cut, CNC rolled. All of our blanks are autoclave processed as a, as a baseline. Anything that you get from Century has been autoclave processed. Uh, that's a, a process of where the, um, during the curing process when the blanks are baked, the resin liquefies in the pre-preg composite sheets uh, and that allows the, the cellophane that holds the, the uh, carbon onto the blank to become loose. It allows it to draw in air. It allows excess resin to stay in there. Our autoclave process evacuates any excess resin, any excess air, uh, and just you know com super compresses the composite. It makes it more sensitive. It makes it longer lasting. If you were to get anything that is in the aerospace or Formula One industries, which is also what Century does, uh, if it's not autoclaved, you're probably not going to be selling things to those people. Uh, tell me a little bit about Century, because as a company, you, you mentioned aerospace. Tell me a little bit about the background of Century itself. So Century is a family-owned uh, family company uh, based out of Washington, England. Um, they've done everything in the past from, uh, you know, doing, I guess probably one of the biggest things they've done here lately, I'll touch on, is the, uh, they just built a, a big... Uh, unfurling um, antenna for a communications satellite. Wow. So they, they're, a, they're a structural component specialist and they do Formula One, aerospace, and uh, they've, they've done everything. They've done chopper blades for a while. I mean, you know, they've, they've done the whole gambit. Um, they're three generations deep uh, in the carbon fiber industry much as I'm three generations deep in the fishing rod building <laughs> industry. So, so that, that was a natural fit then, I guess. Have you yeah. gone back and forth to England about a lot? Or? I have never set foot in No, the no kidding, really. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be perfectly honest, I've never set foot in the factory. Um, most of our stuff, you know, um, I was working, before I started working with Century, I was working with All Star Composites, like way back when, when Brett Crawford owned it, you know, 20 plus years ago. Uh, I started working with them designing fishing rod blanks. And, you know, the process that happened with All Star, you know, my, my family shop is one of the biggest uh, saltwater dealers in the country for All Star. But, you know, they got bought by Shakespeare and then Pure Fishing bought them. And the next thing you know, they're, you know, it's, it's a name more so. Well, we've, we've seen that throughout the yeah. industry as you yeah. have, you know, there's a lot of different manufacturers and folks have a lot of different rod choices and a lot of stuff that's right off the rack. You, 
would you consider the century stuff right off the rack? Well, it is a right off the rack, but it's a different right off of the rack. So all the centuries are handmade right here in the U.S. Um, they're built in my shop in Cape Hatteras. Um, they, they come with all titanium components. We don't build anything that doesn't come with titanium, you know, with the, with the autoclave process and everything. I mean, literally the blank will last a lifetime. You know, it's not going to get soft. It's not going to, you know, the, the action's not going to decay. So we want something that's going to stand the life of the blank. So we use all titanium components on everything. Um, everything is built on spine. So functionally, they're a custom rod. Or, uh, you know, it's functionally it's a custom rod. We originally started out calling them factory customs. But it is a top tier performance oriented, light, strong, fast fishing rod that you can purchase right off of the shelf. And the like, per oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say like going to a, going to a McLaren dealership, you know? <laughs> you go in, you buy a supercar right off of the floor. You know, I'm gonna take this to the Nuremberg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the guys responsible, of course, for getting those rods into the shops and throughout the Northeast market with the Fisherman Magazine is Rob Crossley. Um, Rob, tell me what you do. You're, we talk about Northeast rep, right? What, what, what is your responsibility and, and how do you see the Century in, in the market? Uh, so, so my job is to uh, go around to all the dealers and supply them with all, you know, bring them new product, uh, bring them obviously uh, their inventory. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I uh, just trying to get the product out there. It was, we're, it's something uh, <clears throat> we were kind of lacking a little bit. But this year, I think uh, in last year, we're going to have you know, obviously media and uh, a lot more pro staff and to get the product. I think it's. it's so, so we're saying 2022 and 2023 kind of growing years as we yeah, move into the yeah. future. What's been the response from? It's been great. Uh, tackle shop's been ordering tons of rods and they're sold out within two or three days That's once awesome. they're, they're posting on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, so it's it's growing fast. Do you, do you get a chance to fish the Northeast a lot and use the Century? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, uh, I fish uh, mainly the Barnegat Bay. Ah, my home, and, my and, home waters. And the Raritan. Yeah, so it's good. The, we, we talk a little bit about the process. Ryan talked about the process and the kind of the company overview, but what's your finding? For example, in, in, in Barnegat Bay, um, you, you're, you obviously have to meet a need for folks. Yeah. So for that light tackle angler, for example, in, in Barnegat so, Bay. So it would be the weapon. The seven foot weapon uh, is probably the most versatile inshore rod you possibly can get. Um, it delivers so much um, performance. It can throw a wide range of lures, uh, soft plastics, you know, you can throw a half ounce jig head with a soft plastic all the way up to a four ounce metal lip. It can do it all, you know. Um, it fights the fish way more efficient than any other rod. Um, it, f it allows, with the, the technology that the rod has, you're, you're able to load the rod up into the real seat and fight that fish more comfortable. And with that, you're going to fish more confidence. But with all with all the um, the materials and, and performance that's in that rod, we're delivering you a superior product. Small bays to bigger waters. I know Captain Chris booked. Uh, you, you fished a little bit in Barnegat Bay, but I know you do a lot of fishing in, in big water for a lot of those big stripers too. Um, sort of along the lines of what Rob said. Tell me a little bit about your con your your thought, for example, for throwing a big metal lip for a big striper. What's the kind of rod action? What's what it, what are you looking for in terms of choosing a rod for that particular? Uh, way of fishing right. so i need a uh not too long seven foot to seven eight seven ten f um fast action rod that can uh you know recover quickly after a cast and be able to feel every little thing of that metal lip when it's moving through the water i could tell if i'm digging too deep into the bottom i could tell if i'm getting short striked on the end um and it's a rod that's very light that could throw like you said five ounces four ounces all the way down to half ounce jigs for, or you know, rubber baits on the bottom if they're on the bottom of these fish, to uh, you know, to big eels. I'm fishing eels in the ocean with planer boards, um, landing 40 to into the 50 pound class fish and uh, landing them effortlessly. effortlessly. And uh, that's what's good about the rod. It's a strong rod that could land these fish quickly if we can get them back in the water safely, tagged, 
and uh, everything's released on my boat. So getting back to the metal lips, because I think that's a, a lot of folks have tried to use metal lip swimmers and not with great success. And I think a lot of that has to do with the rod action itself, the selection of the rod that they use. So, so give me a recommendation. What are you looking for in a century uh, specifically in terms of throwing metal lips and, and why is that? What, how does the tip mean so much? Uh, like I said, fast recovery. Uh, you can feel that thump of the metal lip pulsing through the water. You can feel that on the tip of the rod. And um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's, uh, that's the main thing really with the, with the rods, with fast recovery and fighting the fish. And of course, once you hook up, you're talking about backbone. You need some backbone. Right, you need the backbone, get that fish stopped and landed, you know, quickly. One of the unique fisheries uh, in terms of um, uh, our Northeast style fishing, of course, is, is tog, uh, blackfish, because you talk about the backbone, you need a heavy backbone for a rod. This funny story is the uh, state record New Jersey tog was caught on a century rod. And the owner of the Century Rod is is sitting next to me, but you didn't you didn't get the state record, did you? No, and I had to know the story for another time. No, <laughs> you handed your rod off to Chris Sullivan and said, "Here, try this and look, rod," and he catches a state and record. And look what he went and did. <laughs> the coolest part of that story was he was in the stern corner, I was in the port by the house, and I turned around and saw he was on to something big, and that rod was just corked over doing its job. I just pulled out my camera, was like, boop 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 boop. <laughs> I got I got pictures of him that if I would have caught that fish, I would have never gotten pictures like that. So, but you know what? Wasn't I on the phone with you the next morning we, we were, were talking about that? Frank Mahalik is a, a regular contributor to the Fisherman Magazine, and that state record, he called me the next morning and said, you want the article? I was like, yeah, when's it going to be ready? Um, Frank, you do a lot of tog fishing, uh, and you, I, I know we have talked about tog fishing. I've fished next to you uh, over the years to try to figure out what, what you do and, and how to make my togging more successful. What goes into the consideration of a rod, and how are you, you, you I mean, because you're going to be looking at two different rods, obviously, um, from the conventional side and the spin side. Take mm -hmm. me through that process for figuring out tog fishing. Tog fishermen are, are different, okay? There's some really excellent toggers out there that lose all their big fish because they're not focused, they're not dedicated big fish guys. What we've done in creating the pro togger, which Ryan and I, the first conversation we had is we wanted to make a rod off the rack that could handle big fish legitimately. I don't mean maybe lucky. I mean, I want a rod that is beastly. Black fishing, we're in 100, 110 foot of water. It's very vertical. We're on shipwrecks, might be 15, 20 foot high. When I drop that to the bottom, I'm sitting there all day fishing a slack line, trying not to move my bait so I get the bite. When I do get the bite, I need to be able to swing for the fences, get that rod tip up, get on the reel, crank them. Before that blackfish knows what happens, I have two or three seconds before he knows he's in trouble. In two seconds, I have the fish 20 foot off the bottom with that rod and the way I set the hook and the way I fish. At that point, when he knows he's in trouble and he starts heading down towards the bottom, all I can do is hang on. The rod butts in my gut, my hands on the foregrip, and that rod is just doing the work. You know, at that point, I can slow down and fight the fish normally. But that rod, mission-specific rod, it weighs 9.6 ounces, completely assembled off the rack. I can sit there and fish that slack line effortlessly all day. But when I do get that hit and I swing that rod, it's coming. So the old rods that we have in the garage that we might have used for togging 15 years ago, heavy rods, it's uncomfortable and to really fish tactically that way. Mm -hmm. That's one of the real benefits, isn't it? Absolutely. I have my rod over there. We are actually talking about antiques. It was built 25 years ago. It's an old seeker rod with a jig master reel, weighs four and a half pounds. The Pro Togger, 9.6 ounce, I add a Saltiga 15 to it, it weighs, uh, it weighs one pound, six ounces. On the spin side, obviously, tog jigging has become really popular mm -hmm. in the last bunch of years. Uh, so what goes into that consideration? Are you still fishing a slack line with a jig as well? Absolutely. My favorite rod to do that is the Weapon Mag Taper. It's a beastly rod. The one I use is 710. It also comes in 7.3. I have a 7.3 done conventional and a 7.10 spin. I usually fish an ounce and a half, two ounce jig. Fishing the jig is, a lot of guys really push the jig. They want to fish the jig. They want to fish the jig. But if you're, depending on the way the boat's sitting with the wind and the way the current is moving the bait under the boat, 
one side of the boat is always really good for fishing the jig. The, if you're on the other side of the boat where the current is washing that jig under the bottom, it tends to put a very tall bow in the line. So when you do swing for the fences, yeah. there's a lot of slack in the line. So in that situation, when we are out trophy hunting, if I'm on the wrong side of the boat, I'm not going to be able to fish the jig or I'm going to go over there and fish next to Sully. <laughs> <That's perfect. laughs> uh, another guy who's been a trophy hunter I know and uh, also recognizable from the Fisherman Magazine is Garrett Weir who's uh, one of our winners of the uh, Dreamboat Fishing Challenge with the Fisherman Magazine um, we've talked a little bit about tog and striped bass but when you were gunning for that dream boat you were fishing for a bunch of different species that was the only way to win that boat um, tell me a little bit about what goes into your approach to rod selection uh, in terms of going after multiple species? So uh, I think uh, kind of piggybacking on what, uh, what Rob said, the most versatile rod that's out there is the weapon. Um, I think that Century, was the, the combination of Century and I and our relationship um, has kind of gone to where it's, it's going because I think Century is really the rod that's made for a guy that has specific needs. Um, in my case, I want a rod that I can use and a half ounce of bucktail casting into the wind on a day where I, I want to fish 17 to 40 feet of water. So given those specifics, you really need a rod for that. You can have something that's versatile or because it's the options that are given to you with Century, you're allowed to kind of go through the Marriott and really focus on what you want to do. Example, um, when I'm talking, I have three selections. I have a weapon mag, I'm sorry, weapon junior with mag, a weapon, and a weapon mag taper. And the reason that is, is unlike Frank here, I like to fish a half ounce jig sometimes. I like to fish a one and a half ounce jig sometimes. And all three of those selections allow me to give a great presentation, right? Because one of the, the, the biggest components in landing big fish you know, as Frank said, and a big fish guy. So a lot of guys won't say this, but I'm a big fish guy. <laughs> so when I'm catching tog, you know, my, my PB is 19, my PB is 18 on the jig. And the reason why I can say that confidently is because my presentation with the rods that I use, I'm extremely confident in. And when you have the right tool in your hand, that makes a huge difference, right? The same way a plumber or my dad is a, you know, retired union electrician, local three, uh, those individuals have the right tools. Well, once I have a century rod in my hand, I feel like I have the right tool. And landing those fish with the right presentation comes together in quality based on the, the confidence given by century rods. It's funny you bring that up because uh, you know I've, we all have friends that are golfers. I, I had a golf buddy come over and he saw my garage and saw the rods in the, in the garage. And he said, why do you need so many rods? I said, you ever play a round of golf with just your putter? So. Um, so when you're selecting rods, go, go into something more um, kind of uh, elementary, if you will. Um, size, when you're looking at size, because you're mentioning taking up to, you know, having three rods at a time. What goes into size consideration, you know, in terms of the way you're fishing from a boat? So I'll give, uh, I'll give two specific, uh, I guess, comparisons. So the, the novice uh, can really kind of focus in on what I mean. So I'll use fluke and I'll use talk. Um, when I'm, my selection, when I'm uh, fluke jigging, if I'm using a very heavy presentation, for example, a ball jig, which is very popular in the fluke um, northeast um, world right now, say I'm using a five, six ounce ball jig, I want a rod that's seven foot, no longer than seven foot, because I want that rod very much, I want that jig vertical in front of me, I want that rod to not load up much and be sensitive where I can walk the, the ball jig along the bottom, feel every bump, and know when that fish strikes. Um, that seven foot's important because I don't want that rod far away from me. I want it very intimate with me, right? A lot of guys won't understand that, but when you're getting those bites, it makes a, it makes a world of difference, um, again, within the presentation, but also the feel. And uh, coming back to Century, it's, Century allows for that feel because of the way Ryan stated how the rods are made. Um, that off the rack is in tremendously important because uh, essentially you're getting custom rods. And the custom rod you're getting is something you're gonna pay much more for if you go to someone and kind of break things down in the mentality that I've kind of broken it down. But you're getting it off the rack here, right? Which is huge. So 
um, finishing that comparison. Now, when I'm safe fishing for tog, I want a 7.3, sometimes a 7.6, or when I'm tog fishing uh, my conventionals, I want a 7.6. So I have three different weapons, um, excuse me, uh, pro toggers. One is a 7.10, the, uh, the factory. One is 7.8, and one is 7.6. The reason being, if I'm fishing more of a outgoing, the, the tide's going away from me, or on a, on a head boat, I want to be able to have more length. If I'm fishing a smaller boat, like say, I have a Steiger craft. Um, if I'm fishing, um, the angles are important, right? Not to get too deep into this, but ang angles and fishing is extremely important. If I'm fishing an angle where it's up tide, I'm fishing to two o'clock. I want to be able to have a very specific length where that anything I'm getting, I don't want that rod to load too much on a, a hook strike or so now I can, I'm out of the fish's range. Um, all of these things kind of come together and they can, they, they can be as elementary as you make them, sure. but at, at the end of the day, it, it, it boils down to the fisherman's preference. And I've, I've become very preferential in how I fish for a lot of different species based on success, but also rods. I've gone through a lot of rods, right? So uh, I'm, I'm a, truly a rod junkie, I'm a rod hoarder. Um, I just did my man cave over and I counted 140 rods down there. Some of them are so intimate to me because I've had them for so long, whether it be my uncle, my dad, uh, who's given them to me, so I won't let them go. But more importantly, it comes down to selection and what's offered there, and I get everything I need from Century. Back to a, a, a different tool for every purpose. Absolutely. But crossing it over. And you've traveled a lot in the Northeast to win the, the Fisherman Magazine's Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. I know uh, somebody else who's traveled quite a bit is uh, Elliot Sanchez, um, Captain uh, Elliot, right? That's right, recently. Running charters on Jamaica Bay as of 2023? That's right. But you've traveled a lot. Yes, I have. Um, what goes, a consideration for travel rots? Because I, you know, we were talking about it uh, earlier. Uh, I remember the old, we had everything in a rod tube and you had to take these old rod tubes on the airplane and now the ferrule design has really gotten so much better that you can have rods that you can just about tuck in your bag. Absolutely. What do you find as far as when you're, when you're traveling, you know, out of state, down to the South Atlantic, Southeast Florida, you know, what, what, are you, what are you thinking when you're packaging up and hitting the road? Right on. Um, so like we've touched on, um, one of the great things about Century is the versatility and most of our blanks are very forgiving. Um, we do have, as you mentioned about traveling, uh, a blank called the Close Quarter, um, which is specifically designed to be broken down and uh, it's easier to fly with. I do fly with a tube everywhere I go. And, you know, I target a multitude of species, everything from flounder and weak fish down to 200 pound tarpon in Florida. And there's a century rod for every purpose. So when someone comes to me and they have interest in century and they, you know, they want to try some of our rods and get into what we do. You know, I ask them, well, what do you fish? What do you target? And we can work backwards from there. Century really covers all corners of fishing. And for someone like myself, when I go to Florida, for example, I was in Florida this weekend. I had two rods with me and that covered everything I was going to do. It covered all the snook in the backwater and it covered big giant jacks and sharks out front. And so, what were those two rods? Tell me what they. Great are. question. Those rods were the Century Stealth. Um, that's just one of the rods that I love so much. Um, the Century Stealth is very forgiving. Uh, it covers so much uh, different styles of fishing. Um, like what I do, I throw a lot of artificials, and it's tremendous distance as well. You know, you got to get that distance to get out to the bar. And so, those are my surf fishing options um, in terms of like the inshore models um, the century weapon seven foot is my favorite um, the things i've done with that rod it just it just blows me away i mean no one can abuse a rod like <laughs> i can um, and i've 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 been so impressed with what it's been able to do i mean you can truly fish it off the wrist with no elbow or shoulder movement at all easily and you can just as easily turn a 65 pound fish with it I got on a boat with a reputable captain in Delaware Bay with the sentry weapon. I, I board the boat. He said, have you lost your mind? What are you doing with that thing? You can't stop this fish. And I was like, all due respect, captain, watch this. And I proceeded to outfish everyone on the boat with a sentry weapon. And they're fishing broomsticks. I mean, these are giant black drum. And so with the sentry weapon model, um, I have gotten bass to 54 pounds in 90 feet of water. I've gotten redfish over 50 pounds, black drum over 60 pounds. 
I've taken it to Florida. I've caught snook. I've caught tarpon in the Florida Keys with it. It's it's tremendous. So, um, you know, I think that's one of the one of the great things about what we do here at Century is that regardless of what you're targeting or where you are, there's a rod for you, and the longevity is fantastic. You know, I can cast almost any Century rod with the utmost confidence that it's going to do what I need it to do. It's not going to blow up in my hands. And when it comes time to hook that fish of a lifetime, it's not going to let me down. So stealth and weapon, kind of your go-to. Absolutely. Stealth, weapon, uh, and a slingshot. The one I have over there is my very first century. Um, that one's going between my teeth. I'm swimming out to rocks in Montauk with it. You know, it's, um, but yeah, that would pretty much cover it for me. Um, you know, I have four century weapons on my boat at all times. And you know, I've got surf, boat, travel, east coast, west coast, Gulf of Mexico. Pretty much anything. Dig into surf for me for a second, because sure. there's a there's a unique audience, and yeah. um, I know all the hardcore surf casters that I know of, caster. right? That, well, we and we all have our personal. Oh yes. This is what I use. This is it. Absolutely. Um, tell me about the surf scene as far as century rods. Run Absolutely. me through that gamut for plugging and throwing. Absolutely. Rods. So you know, that's what originally drew me to century was the surf lineup, and once I started to test and fish some of those rods. Um, that's kind of what started my fascination with it, and I went further from there. Um, there is a surf rod to cover pretty much everything. I throw a lot of metal lips, big plugs, and just as easily as I throw something this size on a 9.6 century, I can turn around and throw a half ounce bucktail. And so for me, I like, again, it's preference, right? Because every surf caster has different specific needs and different likes, sure. et cetera, et cetera. I love the stealth. I fish a lot of live eels. My biggest surf caught bass of my life was on a century rod with a giant live eel. It had to be like 19 inches. And what's great about live eel fishing, at least for the rod I was using at the time, which was an 11 foot stealth, when you feel that first initial bite, if you've ever live eel fished, I'm sure you're familiar with it, it's just a tap. Mm -hmm. And you could pull that eel out of the fish's mouth if you don't get a proper hook set. But one of the things I love so much about the stealth is that that bite, you're gonna feel it just in the tip, and then you roll through the hook set slowly, perfect for circle hooks, get sure. them in the corner of the mouth every time. And it was no problem for me to stop a 45 pound fish in the moon current, you know what I mean? So it, it, to the untrained eye, you know, it, it, it takes someone who pays attention to detail to truly appreciate what Century is. And so, you know, I don't recommend it to novice fishermen. I, I recommend Century to people who take the sport seriously and who understand what type of performance that is needed to catch the fish of a lifetime. And I, I think we, I mentioned that before, is it a lot, of, a lot of folks start off with rod selection in terms of their price point. And Absolutely. then they start using rods a little bit more for various purposes, whether it's a surf, sure. or whether they're togging, and then you start to get an idea of what exactly makes a perfect rod for them. I hear the weapon talked a lot. Um, yes. I know Kwa Win uses the weapon quite a bit in his way of fishing, too. Um, yeah, I do, but I mean, I'm pretty much the wild card of the group. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am also the greenhorn, too, so I am the wild card of the group, so there are days when you'll catch me up in Poconos Redding. I'm throwing the, uh, the FMA 5-6 weights for trout, or I'll be throwing this for trout at the same time I'm throwing, I'm using the Demon. That's one of my favorite finesse rods in our selection is the Demon. We call it the, pretty much the, the little engine that could, right? So I have a 7.6 Demon uh, rated 132nd up to an ounce. So I'm throwing MEPS. I'm throwing a little stuff. But at the same time, I can run down to the lake, throw one eighth jigs for crappy, swap it over to maybe a Senko, pick up three, four, five pound largemouth. At the same time, I could run half a mile over and won't be afraid to throw it for musky. I've half thrown it for musky. I'm, I'm one day, I'm going to get a musky on it. So, and then at the same time, half that day I get bored, I run down to the shore, I'm using the same demon. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah okay. I've used the same demon for sheep's head, which has been a super big popular thing uh, lately up here. Um, the thing about sheep's head fishing, as if everyone ever attended my seminar, is their bite is a lot different than most species that we have here. It's more of a, a tick, a pause, a movement, a line. You're not gonna feel the bite, as I always tell everyone, it's not a tall where you get the scratch bite or like that really thump, but it's gonna be a very subtle light with the demon, super fast action tip, you feel every little movement of that jig, especially the vertical presentation that we present to them. Um, but at the same time, that same rod will be able to pull 10 pound togs off the bridge structures. I'll use it for fluke in the back. I'll even throw one ounce, one and a half ounce top water for strike bass in the back bays. Um, 
what really got me on the demons when the day I went out to fish with Ryan, right? So he, he passes me the 7 to 6 demon. He's like, this is a new four power. Give it a try. So I'm throwing, we're, we're fishing for speckled trout, me and Ryan, right? So I'm throwing a little ounce in. And he, he brings this rod over, has a one and a half, two ounce popping cork on it. And I'm like, right, it's right, it's only ready for an ounce. He's like, give it hell. <laughs> so I'm throwing this almost two ounce popping cork for like speckled trout, and then this rod's handling it. It's like, and he's like, you don't even have the power. Just kind of let the rod do its work. That's the thing with century rods. We, all these guys know, we let our rods do our work. We don't, we don't put the power into it. The rod does all the work for us. So that's, the, that's pretty much how it works with century rods. You trust the rod. That's all we do. You trust the rod, it will do all the work. The funny thing about century rods is it looks like it doesn't have the power. The sneaky part about it, it's the power in the backbone. Every century rod has sneaky power. And you won't know until you put a bend in it. That's why every time we get to the, anyone comes to the booth, first thing we do, let's put a bend on it. And then when they do, they're like, oh my God. And we, just, we always tell them, keep going. It has that power. Trust the rod. You know, well, that's so true with surf rods too, especially as you guys get older. I mean, we, you know, we, we fish to surf. We're up at the canal for a week with our buddies. We're fishing 10, 12 hours a day. Let me know how your shoulders and elbows exactly. feel after a couple of days. I throw Surf Machine Elite um, 1 to 6 I'm throwing now. It, my shoulder doesn't start hurting until like four days, <laughs> which, is a, which is a huge upgrade from the end of day one. I'm sitting down taking a nap because my arms are killing me throwing my old surf rods. It's, it's an interesting too that you mentioned a crossover, you know, and we, we talked about that, the surf and the inshore, um, but the crossover from fresh to salt. Back on the demon, because I, I want to ask you about sheepshead, and for, for, for us in New Jersey, uh, has become a, a burgeoning fishery. It's really exploding, and I would like to see uh, that kind of continue. I think, I think if you, you focused on them up in Jamaica Bay someplace, I'm sure that those fish are up there. Yeah, I can't say that on camera. That's highly classified. <laughs> <laughs> highly classified Jamaican Bay sheep's head. <laughs> you, you mentioned highly the way um, that, that sheep's head bite. So I want you to compare the sheep's head and the tog in terms of, of the tactic and, and where those, those rods as a tool work. What is the difference between sheep's head and the tog in terms of the way you're fishing? For tog, uh, as we all know, these two guys here, Frank and also Garrett, are really good tog fishermen. So they know with the jigs and stuff like that. We're usually always fishing the bottom, especially tog. Sheep's head, on the other hand, are in the upper column, higher water column. So you, for sheep's head, we fish the water columns, upper, middle. Occasionally, you'll find them on the bottom, but most of the majority of New Jersey sheep's head are in the upper column, first probably 10, 15 feet. So you're literally vertically j hanging your jig in the water column, and a sheep, what they usually do is they come from the bottom and they pick up your jig. Now, without the right rod, you're never going to see that slack line. You're, ne you're not going to see that little pop in the tip because that's the indicator, that pop in the tip. It's not so much feeling. It's in that bite, you're actually it's a visual. visual. It's a visual. There's many times I've had it on my flats boat. I've had guys, guys on my boat fishing, and I'll sit at the bow with the trolling motor, and I'll watch the line for them. And I'll watch it, and they'll literally get robbed every time. And I'm sit I could visually see it. i like, your crab's gone. He's like, but I didn't, I didn't feel nothing. I was like, trust me. They'll pop it up, and crab's gone. Because I'll literally see guys feed the six, seven crabs before they actually hook the fish. And usually they hook the fish when I scream at them, set. So a lot of guys don't, sometimes when they fish in a boat, they're like, they're waiting for me to scream at them to set the hook. That's and the yeah. only way I know. Yeah, it's, it's. If the captain's not yelling at me, I'm not doing something right. We, we talked about a bunch of different rods. Run me through the, the line real quick, because we've been talking about demon, we've been talking about weapon. T All right, so what we've got, um, Starting from the from the lightest, we have our Demon, which is our finesse series. You know that goes from everything from unweighted soft plastics to Ned rigs to um, drop shot, uh, small top water, small crankbaits. Then we go to the Weapon Junior. That's the next step up. We have it in well. We keep the first one. I, I can't even keep up with it half the time. Mad scientist, but, I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what we've got is we've got the the regular full carbon Weapon Junior. We have the glass-infused Weapon Junior, which we also use for some of our uh, fly rod, short stick fly rod blanks. We have a full carbon moderate action Weapon Junior. Some of these aren't even on the website. These are, but they're, they've been around. It's just, uh, you know, our website's a work in progress, okay. if you will. Uh, but then we go to the Magnum Taper, which is the Weapon Junior uh, material and essentially the Weapon Junior flag adjusted a little bit for a larger taper mandrel. So thinner blank wall, a um, little lighter feeling in the hand, a little less weight in the tip. 
Um, but it does create, again, the, the magnum is a thinner blank wall, so it's not going to high stick as well as the regular weapon wall. Okay. Um, then we go to the, the weapon itself. So you got the Demon Junior weapon. Um, we make full carbon and glass infused uh, weapons. Actually, we're just, we got some prototypes here at the show uh, um, of a new uh, glass infused weapon Junior. So it'll be more like a, a weapon, but a price point, more price point oriented. You know, so instead of being seven hundred dollars, it's going to be more along the four hundred dollar range. Okay. So, but we've got the uh, the weapon in full carbon and the weapon in glass. The glass weapon is unbelievable, and it's not your grandfather's fiberglass. It's you know we're using a, an ultra high modulus structural fiberglass with a nano cilia infused resin so the, the resin's not just a glue it's actually structural um, and the combination between the graphene resins the nano cilia resins the the tech stream that goes on the weapon it is just a it is it is a masterpiece of a rod it really does man and it, it will do anything we've even made a couple of surf versions of the weapon where we took the the weapon blank and chopped it off at six feet put a plug inside of it and then slid it down. I, I tweaked up a, a force equals mass accelerated carp rod butt section and put the tip into the butt and made them deflect the way they're supposed to for an even. And it, it's, uh, it's, it's turned into a, a surf rod that you can flip a half ounce bucktail with and then rock flip a 20 pound striper with confidence. And it's as big around as your pinky finger. Wow. Maybe. So, you know, we're, we're the, the, so then after that, we've got the, the weapon mag, which is a heavier taper uh, version of the weapon. Um, and then we've got our GT series, which is our, which are our popping and stick bait rods. We've got our vertical jig series, uh, which are VJ series for vertical jigging. Um, we've made, um, we've made the Excalibur series which is a 30 to 80 pound class with an adjustable butt um, for trolling, chunking, daytime swordfish, pitch awesome. bait, anything you want to do with it. 30 to 80 pound class matches up really well with like a, though we use a lot of 50 talic as on them. Match, great, great pairing. Then we have our Chatham series for uh, tuna and high speed trolling for Wahoo. We have our 50 to 130. 50 pound class tip, 130 pound class butt. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, an extra long uh, rod, you know, more so, you know, you're used to six, six, seven feet. These are actually seven foot 10, uh, seven foot 10 uh, blanks. So that enables us to get a nice transition from the 50 pound down to the 130. So it is longer, it lifts better, it, uh, it's it you lose less fish less hook pulls less hook bends it's just overall better uh for for chunking and trolling uh, great high speed trolling rod for wahoo that 50 pound class eats up the initial strike whereas the 130 gives you the backbone um to pull the fish up you know even even when you're running 18 knots you know um the uh we have the 130 unlimited chatham which is the giant bluefin killer Got some captains in the Northeast that have been fishing this rod for five or six years now. And, you know, they're bringing 100, 100 plus inch bluefin to the boat nice. in under 40 minutes. Just crushes them. Um, then we, get, we can go into our surf series. We have our entry level into the surf. Our fast action is the slingshot. Our moderate action is the stealth. And then we've got our, you know, Northeast surf model, the Nor'easter, which has never... We have never had a fishing related failure in that rod since it's been out 12 years. No fishing related failures, no breakage. Now there've been some outside fishing related <laughs> that have come up, you know, uh, I'll give it that. But, um, but yeah, we've never had one broken on a fish. Um, the next step we go into, you know, we have some of our, we got our nine foot demon, we've got our nine, six, 10 foot, nine foot, 11 foot weapons, which are kind of hybrid rods. Um, then we go to our uh, surf machine series, which is designed the stiffest part of the rods underneath of the reel seat. So it loads like a longbow, it accommodates an overhand casting style. So the, nor the, um, the surf machines are 
our premium processing, premium anti-twist, and premium material minus the graphene. Um, then from there we go to the Surf Machine Elite, which is cost be damned, this is the best fishing <laughs> rod money can buy. You know, it's thousand bucks. You know, there you go. Here, you want the best rod you can buy? Here it is. So you are, you really are taking because you mentioned before you're you're looking at price point rides now. So you're you're carrying that over from that person who's. Well, we talked a little bit about the novice, for example. Um, certainly not out of the realm for the novice, but you're taking yeah. people all the way through the evolution of. Of, yeah, of what we do. yeah, you know, and there's never going to be a price point century. No. You know, you're never going to walk into walk into Walmart or walk into someplace and find a century. We're for happy to hear that. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty bucks. You know, you're not going to do it. It's just not going to happen. It can't happen. Small batch attention to detail. You know, it it just can't happen. This is a this is a cra artisan crafted rod from the word go. That's the coolest thing to hear. I, I think small batch resonates with a lot of people. It's yeah. kind of become uh, you know. It, it does mean something. Yeah, you know? and when we run a batch of blanks, even at the factory, 50 is our maximum batch load that we run at a time. So these are a small batch manufactured, craft made fishing rod. And you're no, you know, but a, a price point century is gonna be in the $400 range, you know? That's, that's a price point century. Um, but it's still gonna come with titanium guides and it's still gonna, you know, these, these new, um, these new, uh, Magnum taper glass infused weapon juniors are going to be something special. They really are. They're going to be ultra rugged, ultra high performance, and you know, uh, a, a very nice rod to fish overall. That's coming out sometime in 2023. Yeah, we're um, waiting on the first batch to come out right now. Probably looking at um, someplace uh, early April, early mid April for the for the first run. Cool. Hopefully, I can get one for the stripe run. We should be here within a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll build them fast, man. Oh, yeah. Guys, I got to thank you so much, Ryan, Rob. Uh, thanks for, for being here to kind of give us the overview. And you guys, it's always great to see you. And I look forward to seeing you out there um, this season. Uh, any final thought? Give me a final thought. When you think of, of century, what's the, what's the first word? Frank, what, what comes to your mind? One, one word. For instance, when you get the pro togger, you can, somebody like Garrett can take a pro. I can give Garrett a pro togger blank and say, "Bro, you've been togging forever. Build it however you want. Build it how it suits you." If you're a newer togger, even a guy that just wants to improve his game, he can buy the factory pro togger that Ryan builds in at Hatter's Jacks, and you're getting a pro togger that was designed by somebody who spent their life at the rail. It's, it's, not just, it's not just by some guy who's pinching pennies and says, oh, I think it's a great idea to have an 18-inch butt. You're going to get a rod designed with mission-specific features. Like even the way you, flat, the way you, you fish a slack line, it's, a, it's just a coincidence that the butt of the rod sits perfectly in my wrist. My hands sit <laughs> on the blank. My, you know, everything is just perfect. The balance is effortless. That's the kind of experience that you won't get from a rod built by anyone else. Big consideration, Fisherman Magazine, we're a Northeast publication from Delaware up to New England and through that area. The folks that are here have contributed greatly to the design, you just heard that. Um, the way we fish, uh, that is the consideration from a manufacturer with, uh, with aerospace background, hand built uh, in North Carolina. Yep, yep. All the rods are, are hand-built in North Carolina. All the blanks come from Washington, England. Washington, England, and designed very much by a lot of the pro staffers that are here. So it's definitely worth your consideration, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, I would encourage you to go pick up a Century Rod today because I think you're going to fall in love.